Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Game Boy Color games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for this video, we're going to need to have dev mode and retro arch downloaded and installed on your Xbox before we can do this. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video. I already have a previous video showing you step by step how to do this. I'll be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below. You can go check that out and then come back to this once you have that all set up. From this point, what we're going to be doing is grabbing any sort of external drive and we're going to be putting our games on it. Currently, I have my Pokemon Crystal here in a .zip file. Now, I will also mention I'm not going to be showing you in today's video where to download games, although they are really easy to find a Google search will help you out or you can feel free to create dumps or backups of your existing games i'll be leaving some links and information in the description down below to help you with this but i won't be sharing any game download links when you get your game if you do download it it will most likely come in a .zip file like i have right here and that will be no problem we can actually load and run this directly inside retroarch however i do typically like to extract my games it's also really easy to do inside windows what we need to do is select our zip file we're going to be right clicking we're going to be clicking extract all click ok in the pop-up that comes up and then our game will be extracted into a folder right here if we come inside here, we will have a .gbc file or a game by color file, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So inside RetroArch, we will be able to open up and play a .gbc file or a .zip file. Either will work just fine. From this point, once you have your games downloaded and extracted and put on an external drive, what we're going to be doing is removing our external drive. So I already have this on my iDrive, which I'm going to be disconnecting right now. And I'm going to be bringing that over and plugging that into our Xbox. And we're going to be continuing from there and loading this up into RetroArch. Now, if this is your first time connecting this external drive, it might ask if you want to use it as game storage or if you want to use it as media storage. You need to make sure that you select media storage here. If you select Xbox game storage, it will wipe everything and only allow you to install Xbox games. Whereas with media Media storage we can put any type of files on here we want so it's really important that you select media storage once you have that set up what we're going to be doing is loading up RetroArch you can either do it from this menu here or you can feel free to launch it to home and run it directly from there once your RetroArch opens up we're going to be coming to the leftmost menu here our main menu we're going to be scrolling down to load content we're going to be selecting this open and here we're then going to have to locate to where our games are currently downloaded so most likely they will be in your E drive however for me I currently have my drives partitioned so for me they're actually going to be showing up on my F drive but if you're just plugging in a normal drive they'll show up in your E drive. So I'm going to be going to my F drive. I'm going to be loading up my Xbox. I'm going to be coming to my ROMs folder. And here I'm going to be coming to my Game by Color Games folder. And here I'll then see a list of all my currently downloaded Game by Color Games. Now from this point, as mentioned before, you can feel free to load your games up directly as a .zip. However, for today's video, I'm actually going to be loading up our GBC file directly. As you can see, I have that right here. I'm just going to be clicking A on this again. And here I'll see a list of all available cores that we can use to play our Game by Color game. Now, if you select a .zip file, some other cores might show up here as well as you're trying to load a .zip, not directly directly a .gbc file. However, for me, it's already filtered to Game Boy and Game Boy Color cores, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. So if you selected a .zip, you might just have to scroll down to the Nintendo section and you'll be able to see these here as well. Now for today's video, I'm going to be using the Gear Boy core. However, you can feel free to experiment and play around with these different cores to see what one works best for you. However, in my experience, Gear Boy is one of the best ones to use. I'm simply going to be clicking A and it's going to take a couple of seconds and then our game is going to start to load up and play on our Xbox. Now, one nice thing about this core is it actually keeps the original aspect ratio. It doesn't try to stretch and fill the entire screen and that's something I definitely appreciate it keeps everything the way it's meant to be looking now if at any point you'd like to open up your menu I'm going to be pressing down and select for mine however you're going to have to use whatever key combination you set up to open up your menu what we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the options tab if we select this open we'll be able to see a couple of different options related to our core now this core doesn't have a lot of options which is actually a good thing it doesn't need to have a lot of options here we have create game file options you have the emulated model which will require a restart if you change however I'd recommend leaving it on auto we have the mapper which which will also require a restart. Again, I'm just going to be leaving this on auto. We have the color palette. Here you can come in and change and experiment depending on what you want. Again, I'm going to be leaving it on the original. And then finally, you can allow up, down, left, and right. However, it's totally optional depending on what you want to do. Now, we do also have a couple of other options here, including cheats, shaders, and you can play around with a few of the other controls here as well. For me, I only really touch on the general core options as they're the main things you will actually need to be aware of. However, you can feel free to experiment with anything else here as well. From this point, if you'd like to continue with your game, you can come back up to the resume option and then you can come up and play around again with that. Now, one other thing I would recommend doing is creating a game playlist. As you can see, I have one right here for the SNES and it was something that will make your life in RetroArch a lot easier. It basically creates a full section of games and it'll even add cartridges, which is a little nice touch that I really like. It'll basically concatenate all of your games. It will automatically assign a core to everything so you won't have to manually search for a game every time. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video. However, I will be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to set that up. It's definitely something I'd recommend doing, especially if you're going to be using RetroArch a lot and it's really, really easy to do and 
set up. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play a game by color games in your Xbox Series X or your Xbox Series S. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.